This video might be a longer one than it needs to be given the subject matter, but I wanted to make sure that I, I hammered home a few points. And yeah, that one's predictable. Some of you are gonna love it. Some of you are gonna be Thor about it in the comments. It is said that when the gods themselves are in distress, they call upon one of their own. Rune masters would inscribe his name in stone, asking for his protection. Skaldic poetry praised him through the heathen period. He is a deity associated with protection and the common man. Thor, the thunderer, is the deity whose hammer, Mjolnir, survives to this day as the main symbol of heathenry. Tons of heathens are rolling around today with this little symbol that I've got around my neck. Uh, and sure, it's a symbol for Thor, but isn't heathenry a polytheistic religion? Why don't we wear a bunch of necklaces for each god that we follow? Why did the hammer of Thor become the symbol that we wear if Odin is the high god and not Thor? And is there a reason why we wear any symbol at all? The reasons are varied and steeped in history. So let's get into it. It's unclear where we got the word Mjolnir, but it does seem to have some related words in other languages that mean things like grind and crush in Icelandic to words in Russian and Welsh that mean lightning. Now, this is speculation, but it's certainly attractive because it lines up with myth, uh, as we even see legends in which Thor crushes an opponent with the force of his thunderbolts. Now, the Mjolnir appears in legend as a gift to Thor from the dwarves as arranged by Loki. This was part of a repayment and apology for shaving off the hair of Thor's wife, Sif. Mjolnir is described in legend as incredibly sturdy, able to return to his hands when thrown, but having a very short handle. And in spite of this short handle, it was seen as the best and most powerful of the gifts from the dwarves. And this size enabled Thor to carry it with him easily. Thor continues on many adventures and battles in which his hammer demonstrates its power. Thor's enemies often seem just as afraid of his hammer as they are of Thor himself. The strongest of gods, wielding the most powerful of weapons, would certainly come with a reputation. Thor, throughout history, is seen as the protector and guardian of mankind, and his hammer as a sacred symbol representing that protection. One such legend involves Thor losing his hammer, as it's taken by a Jotun that wants Freya as his bride. Freya refuses to help, so Thor must enlist the help of Loki and his shape-shifting powers in order to get it back. Thor is dressed as a bride to give the illusion of being Freya, and Loki goes with him as his handmaiden. During the story, Loki, somewhat comically, explains away things like Thor's massive appetite that he demonstrates during the wedding and his intense eyes by saying that he fasted for eight days and didn't sleep for the same period of time. <laughs> Dude, why is Freya eating so much? Oh, she, she didn't eat for eight days before coming here because she was extremely excited to, to be here. Why is she like so intense? Like why are her eyes just like, oh, she didn't sleep for eight days because she was super excited about being. Interestingly, in this part of the story, Thor's descriptions remain masculine as he is referred to as Sif's husband uh, as he consumes a massive amount of food, for example. Whereas Loki's gender fluidity is expressed as Loki is referenced in feminine terms, such as the wise bridesmaid, highlighting that Thor is wearing a costume, whereas Loki is simply representing as herself for this portion of the story. Whatever the case, when the Jotun gives Freya Mjolnir, as a wedding gift by dropping it in Thor's lap, Thor proceeds to kill everyone present, except for Loki, who presumably quite enjoyed the spectacle. That's right, real fans of the Marvel Universe. Loki is indeed gender fluid. Has been. This identity for Loki is as old as Loki. Get over it. Anyway, this bond between Thor and his hammer has resulted in Mjolnir itself as a symbol of Thor and his protection. Numerous small amulets, uh, appearing to be Thor's hammer, have been found across the heathen world. They are often no more than a few centimeters long. They are very similar to the description of Mjolnir that we find in legend with this short handle, suggesting that, yes, indeed, these were associated with Thor. And we find these amulets in various burials, mostly with women, but often with men as well. 
Carrying a small image of Thor may also have been a practice during the Christianization of Scandinavia, as a saga mentions a man accused of carrying a small ivory idol of Thor, the implication being that he was worshipping Thor in secret under the reign of Olaf I of Norway, who is credited with things like building the first church in Norway. The man in the saga is a Christian convert, but the accusation remains, showing that this was likely an issue at the time. Now, here we see an image of Thor found in Iceland, which dates to around the time of Christianization. It was likely a small altarpiece designed to be carried in someone's pouch and may have been part of a heathen's secret practice in the form of a portable altar of sorts. As we can see, the broom closet exists even in antiquity. And it's true that Thor became a bit of a competitor deity to Christ at the time of Christianization. Njal's saga, which takes place in Iceland during Christianization, records a discussion between a heathen Cirrus and a Christian missionary, in which the Cirrus tells of a story where Thor challenged Christ to a duel. Christ denies the duel, implying that he would lose against the strongest of gods with the mightiest of weapons. The missionary denies this, claiming the superiority of his god, but the Cirrus points out that his ship crashed in a storm, attributing the wreck to the Thunderer himself. While it's clear that the wearing of the Mjolnir was a practice that predated the Christianization period, for example, we've found amulets that may be related to this practice going back to the Migration period during the fall of Rome, it appears to have been a practice that became far more popular as heathenry encountered Christianity. Now, this is speculation, but it does appear that heathenry responded to the cross with the Mjolnir, that as heathens saw Christians with their crosses, they may have seen a need to represent their own faith with the Mjolnir. And this could have taken a number of routes in justification. The Hammer of Thor is easily justified as a protective amulet. It's also easily justified as a simple icon of differentiation. Perhaps the heathens wanted to show a representation of their faith as they got into struggles against Christian kingdoms and hegemony as it grew throughout the early Middle Ages. Many of the Mjolnirs that we find originate from the Viking period and then into Christianization. Now, with the existence of these amulets going into Christianization, another justification arises, which is one of rebellion. Heathens may have used the Mjolnir to show themselves to each other, to worship in secret, or even wear it publicly as an act of defiance against the cross. Now, this usage is not something that is directly recorded. We don't have any interviews with heathens that wore Mjolnirs in history. So the actual varied historical usage of these amulets remains a mystery. But these are a collection of possible uses that would have been consistent with the period. Some of the earlier hammers that were found uh, are this set of four hammers found in various places scattered throughout Sweden and Denmark. Most of the modern Mjolnir pendants uh, are based on or even a copy of one of these four. Mine seems to be most closely related to C in this image. A, B, and C were unfortunately found between like 1790 and 1877 by non-professionals and are devoid of their archaeological context. So in other words, we know the town, but we don't know the dirt. So we don't know much about specifically when they appeared, whether it was during the Viking Age or into Christianization. Whatever the case, heathens today have also adopted the wearing of the Mjolnir as a practice for a variety of reasons, and some of them seem to coincide with history. Now, it's important to note that our justification doesn't need to be the same as those over a thousand years ago, but we can note the commonalities. Often, it starts as a response to the cross for some heathens. I wore a cross as a Christian pretty regularly, and now I wear a Mjolnir. And I remember when I put down the cross, and I remember years later picking up a Mjolnir and noting that some of the reasoning was similar. For me, putting it on was both an acknowledgement not only to myself, but also to Thor of the path that I was taking. Now, some might wear it as an act of rebellion, but I find that to be fairly uncommon among modern heathens. The Mjolnir is a style choice for some non-heathens, so it's common to wear it with no religious significance, so, such to the point that people barely notice it unless they already know what it is. I find it to be among the pagan symbols that gets the least reaction in that way. And honestly... I find that to be a positive. <laughs> now, even in light of that lack of recognition, some heathens will wear the Mjolnir inside their shirt or hidden in some way. And for those in the broom closet or that just aren't interested in religion being brought into the conversation, 
that's a reasonable thing to do, especially say like if you're in the South where in some environments, any necklace will get questions. But for those wishing to avoid that conversation, it's easy enough to just say, well, it's a symbol of Thor and you think that's neat. Those uh, in the broom closet can easily utilize the trend of people who wear it for style to their advantage. Just because you wear a necklace that others can see for your spirituality doesn't mean that your spirituality is everybody else's business. There's nothing wrong with wearing a necklace associated with your faith and remaining private about it. But finally, there is a recognition that I came to later on in my path about the Mjolnir amulet, that the more in-depth you get into an understanding of Thor and what he represents, that there is this theme of protection and strength assigned to Thor. Now, how that manifests might vary from heathen to heathen. We have no direct record to clarify how that relationship was seen by those in history. But within the context of the simple and the politics of the period, it's very easy to guess. So some may see the amulet itself as spiritual protection, while others may simply view it as a reminder of Thor's protective character and to emulate that as best we can. But I think that for many heathens, the Mjolnir is a symbol of our path. It serves as a reminder of our inner strength and our relationship to the gods. Mjolnir is the sacred weapon of Thor, protector of humanity. Wearing his hammer would be not only to inherit, but to embody that protection. And in all honesty, when we wear the Mjolnir, we should live up to it. But let me know down in the comments if you wear the Mjolnir. What caused you to wear it? What does it mean to you? Perhaps you have another perspective for others to consider. With a symbol such as this, and with heathens as varied as they are, there are many justifications for wearing the Mjolnir, which may vary from heathen to heathen. So please, share your perspective. And with that, hail to my patrons for making this content possible. It's good to have people at your back. Take a hammer to uh, the like button, to the subscribe button, to the bell. Just, just hit everything with a hammer. They're all nails now. And remember to find a way or make one.